What is up everybody? This is Anthony with VR365. What is going on? It is Friday. It is July 19th and right now it is 3.31 p.m. Pacific time. Time for another live episode of VR365. And you know what? I got to tell you guys, have you seen, actually I'm just thinking of it now. Hold on a second. Let's go to Twitch and let's go to VR365 on Twitch because we had an episode yesterday. I hope you guys checked it out. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, so let's go ahead and go over to the webinar. And here we are. Yeah, you can see this episode right here, MRTV. 373 views, so we are actually getting a handful of views over there with MRTV. That was me and Sebastian yesterday. We covered a lot of interesting topics. I thought it was a really good interview, so I just want to remind you guys, if you want to check out that interview, almost two hours of me and Sebastian talking basically about the state of VR. We talked a lot about the HP Reverb. We, of course, talked a lot about the Valve Index. We talked about the Rift S. We talked about the Samsung Odyssey. We talked about Vive Cosmos, Acer Concept D, OHO 500,000. Uh, you know, we pretty much talked about it all. We talked about Defector. We talked about the doom and gloom of VR. Is VR going to die? We talked about Oculus Connect 6. Is Sebastian going to hop on a plane? That's the question. Is he going to be in San Jose, man? Am I going to be in San Jose? I don't know. But uh, anyway, you can tune into that episode and check that out. I will get that onto YouTube uh, probably later this weekend. So I absolutely will get that on YouTube. So just wanted to say that. But anyways, let's go ahead and get back over here. And you know what? We've got breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, not really breaking news, but we've got some trailers that have come out of nowhere that I didn't know about. Okay, so Tarzan VR, Stonepunk Studios. What? Tarzan VR, Stonepunk Studios. I have no idea what this is. I didn't know anything about this. Let's go ahead and check this out. So I'm going to turn up the volume. This, by the way, this trailer on the screen right now, that is Hell Split Arena. Hell Split Arena by Deep. Deep Type Games. And that is coming later this year. And that does look pretty dope. Deep Type games. I like their logo. I like their name. Pretty sweet. Okay, so I'm going to turn this up and we're about to check out Tarzan. All right. show too much of the game at all, so I have added these screenshots from the official website to give you a slightly better idea of what to expect from this Tarzan VR game. Hmm. Okay, I want to see the very start of this again. Let's see the very start of this. Because it says Stonepunk Studios. Let's watch the very start of this. Okay, come on, bro. Nice animation, really like it. Good job. Stonepunk Studios. 
and you look at this part right here, like right there, it's like Primordian, Primordian. You know, if I put the Primordian logo up right now, I'd be like, yeah, Primordian. I mean, this looks very Primordian, except they added, you know, the uh, bird off of the cover of Fruit Loops. Um, but then you start to see a little bit of a cell shaded look to it. And of course, you know, that you get the Disney-esque music. Of course, we need like a Elton John song to go along with this one, right? Tarzan VR, Tarzan VR. And it kind of gives you the comic book styly. And then I grabbed this from a channel, uh, some other YouTube channel, and the guy grabs some images. So I guess this is TarzanVirtualReality.com. And there are some images and I don't know if Stonepunk Studios is, is he the primary developer here? Did somebody, it's almost like Disney, somebody from Disney played Primordian. And they said, holy shit, this could be Tarzan. You could be swinging through this jungle. We can get rid of these predator enemies. We add cell shading to everything and we call it Tarzan VR. You know, we can call it Tarzan VR. And that's kind of what that looks like. Yeah, that intro is incredibly long. This guy's intro is forever, which means I'm just going to go go ahead. So there's some other studios. So I wonder if this is being made in collaboration or um, it says Stonepunk Studios. I wonder if they just licensed, like if they licensed the Primordian engine and then some other development house is actually like putting the Tarzan into it. And Tarzan, you know, he swings from vine to vine, right? So kind of Spider-Man. Spider-Man meets Primordian, brah. Sp Spider-Man meets Primordian. So um, it's Stonepunk plus the Exorcist devs. That was Wolf and Wood? Wolf and Wood Interactive? No, I don't think it was Wolf and Wood Interactive. I didn't see what it said at the very start of it. Um, we can try going to the webinar and see if we, we can look it up. But yeah, so Tarzan VR. Let's go to the website and figure this thing out. Okay, so where am I? I got to find where what browser I'm in. Okay, so right over here. Yeah, so uh, what did it say? Virtual re Tarzan, uh, tar Tarzan Virtual Reality something. Let's see, Tarzan Virtual Reality. Um... Uh, Damn, I didn't see. Okay, well, let's just go Tarzan VR. Tarzan VR. Okay, Tarzan VR swings into VR later this year in, in an episodic adventure. Well, actually, why don't we go ahead and read this story? So this is like 39 minutes ago. Like, I didn't see this earlier. So this kind of came... Oh, Fun Train. It's published by Fun Train. Yeah, I don't see where Wolf and Wood Interactive. Wolf and Wood Interactive is the developers of like Exorcist VR, a chair in a room. I don't think they're involved with this, but maybe maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, it says the game is in production from Primordian creator Stonepunk Studios. Damn, this dude is a busy beaver. Jay from Stonepunk Studios. He needs to jump into chat and be like, yeah, bro. I am the man. I am making multiple games all over the place. He's got Disciples of Dawn, that really cool looking like black and white kind of a thing. He's got that coming at some point. I think like summer of 2020 is Disciples of Dawn. Looks really cool, black and white, kind of weird, mysterious looking thing where I think you get like flashes of color that are going to come in. And he's also doing Tarzan VR. This dude doesn't sleep. Now, I did talk to him recently, and I think he has some other people that are working with him. So it's not just him 100% by himself. So I think he's got a couple of extra people that are banging away with him. But it looks like this is going to be an episodic type thing. Issue 1, The Great Ape. Jane has been abducted by a group of invaders, and Tarzan must seek the wisdom of the great ape in order to find the trail of her mysterious captors. So I wonder if... If he's just making these episodic things and just kind of banging it out piece by piece, um, interesting. We absolutely, there's no question about it, we have got to have Jay on the show. We got to have Jay on the show because we got to talk to him about Oculus Quest. We got to talk to him about Valve Index. We got to talk to him about um, 
Primordian, you know, is Primordian basically done? Is it, you know, Primordian is the way it's going to be? Uh, we got to talk to him about Disciples of Dawn, and we've got to talk to him about Tarzan VR. Now, I don't know if some of that stuff, maybe he's not allowed to speak on it, but I would like to interview Jay of Stonepunk Studios in the very near future because, yeah, that's coming completely out of the blue. Who would have expected this? Uh, I don't think anybody was really expecting this. So that's kind of cool. Um, interesting. We didn't get much of a look. It, you know, it has the jungle. I mean, the Primordian jungle was awesome. And it looks like it's going to add a little bit of a cell shaded flare to it. And um, that that works pretty well. So I think that could be pretty cool. <laughs> There's that guy's outro, dude. What are the chances? What are the chances I would come back to this screen and this dude's 28 second outro would be playing? The chances were very good. And that is exactly what happened. The random time, I, I picked a random time to come back here and we see like his 25 second outro. And then there it is. That is Tarzan VR, VR, VR. Okay, you know what? We've got another brand new trailer for a game that we've already known about, but it is a brand new trailer. It's an exciting game. I believe it is called Paper Beast. Is it Paper Beast with an S or Paper Beast? But is it is an Eric Chahi game. You know, the guy that made out of this world or another world way back in the day you know he had one hit song back in the early 90s and everybody's known him since then but no seriously dude eric chahi he's a legitimate baller of a programmer he's got a new team pixel reef they've got a new game for playstation vr it is called paper beast and let's go ahead and check out the brand new trailer for this puppy and let's see if i can get the trailer on before we see a 25 second outro okay here we go grab it grab it grab it oh no there we go All right, there it is. That is Paper Beast. And Paper Beast looking pretty good. <laughs> Nathy says, better than my outro. Dude, nobody's going to have a 28-second outro, man. That's just too damn long. Like, people don't have that kind of an attention span. But looking at Paper Beast, like, we do in this little trailer here, we do see the move controllers. And we see how you can kind of look at you're interacting with these creatures. They're reacting to you. So it's this magical kind of a surreal kind of a world. This backdrop. Uh, you got these weird alien creatures that are forming out of the digital whatever. The digital divide, man. It's the digital divide. And all of these pre all of these creatures are just forming out of nothing, and you get to interact with them. The developer is Pixel Reef. That is Eric Chahi and Company, the developer of Another World, Out of This World, back in the days on like Sega CD. I played out of dude. I played Out of This World on the Panasonic 3DO, and that was the bomb. Out of This World on a, on the Panasonic 3DO. That was legit. That was like in 1994, and it was drop dead gorgeous. Incredible music, incredible backgrounds. And this looks pretty cool. I'm legitimately excited for this. Unfortunately, at the very end of this trailer, there's no mention of like 2019 or anything like that. So we might be waiting a little bit for Paper Beasts, but another impressive PlayStation VR game, another exclusive. People sometimes get upset at the fact that we've got so many exclusives 
console exclusives you know it's the name of the game i mean who can blame sony what sony is doing here they're creating this huge library imagine when they have a much higher end vr headset for playstation vr 2 they're going to still have this back library they're probably going to have some kind of netflix type service that will give you access to all of the psvr 1 games for some kind of monthly fee and it'll kind of like shuttle in different games and then you're going to have the brand new psvr 2 headset it's going to be freaking next level we saw some rumors about it 220 degrees fov and all of that that was almost like remember that fake playstation vr 2 video that i had that one day and i was like oh my god it was announced and i was renting that video it was talking about a lot of those same rumors i don't know that i really believe all of that okay so actually the first real topic that i had for today is I did want to talk about Racket and X because I didn't really get a chance to talk about this yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume down on this. This is just some random gameplay footage. I wanted to be able to have some footage of the actual legitimate Oculus Quest version. Um, didn't get a chance to talk about this really yesterday because Sebastian hadn't played it. And, you know, I had him on for an interview. I'm not going to spend five minutes talking about Racket and X with Sebastian there. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about it now. So I've been playing this game for the last couple of days. And man, my impressions of the game have kind of moved around a little bit. When I first got the game, I was actually mildly disappointed in the very, very beginning when I first got it. But I think it was a combination of factors. And I just played it recently. Like before this episode, I was in here playing this game in fact i've got a score like i'm ranked 852nd so i'm in the top 900 i was like a thousand and something i'm under the vr roundtable uh gamer tag for this game so you might find me on the leaderboards in the arcade mode so i'm in the top 1000 i don't know how many people have this game maybe not that many more and i'm at the very bottom but i'm like 852 or something um, I survived for like 14 minutes or whatever when I was playing this game and just got done playing it. And I got to tell you straight up, we might be looking at the best 3D audio on the Oculus Quest so far with this game. But you got to break out the headphones. Headphones are absolutely mandatory with this game. It is two completely different games because a lot of times... My Oculus Quest is over there. It's charging up right now. I actually have a cable connected to it. I'm charging it up because my battery was down like 23%. So I got to give it some more juice so I can do some more Racket and X a little bit later. But a lot of times I just grab my Oculus Quest. I throw it on my head and I don't grab headphones. I normally don't grab it. I'll use the built-in audio and for the most part for a lot of the basic things I'm doing it's pretty much okay. Now when I really want to dial into an experience I will grab these Sennheisers. But here's the deal. If you buy Racket and X absolutely use headphones. You have got to use headphones because the audio in this game is the true star of this game. The audio is the star of the show. If the audio was crap, this game would be relatively mediocre. But the audio is so good in certain parts. The background music varies in its quality, but there's some really good background tracks that are playing. The sound effects are good. The voiceovers are good. It kind of has an announcer that is kind of Mortal Kombat style -y. And he kind of does some like Mortal Kombat style announcing about like good shot, da 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 da, but kind of Mortal Kombat style voice as you're playing in the game. And the 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 voice the voice work is good. The sound effect quality is good. The background music is good, and sometimes it's really good. And then you're talking about a, a 360 game. Like this game is really 360. Nathy, by the way, dude, I gotta interview you, man. You gotta hit me up, man, because I definitely need to interview you, Nathy. It's been way too long. We gotta do the classic interview, the history of Nathy, all the way back. You know, we gotta do that. But um, what was I saying about this? Oh, it's very 360. Like this game is very 360. 
and it, it's a great exercise game for the quest it's a great game this is a great game where you can jump in and you can get like a, a burst of 20 minutes of good enjoyment out of it as well um so do i have any negatives to say about this game let me try to think of the negatives that i'll say well the number one negative i could possibly say about racket and x on the quest is there's times where i have my racket and i'm trying to hit the ball and the racket um i feel like i miss the ball by like two inches and that's what she said i know <laughs> i feel like i missed the ball just barely right and it's like it's like oh man i had that shot you know because i'm just i'm playing the game I'm, I'm just you know doing my oh also check this out when you play this game i just turn on one controller you don't need two controllers you just have your one racket so if i know that i'm playing racket in x i go ahead i grab my quest i turn on a single controller and I'm ready to roll, baby. I don't need another. There's no need for another controller. You've got one. You've got one racket, you know, in your right hand or your left hand or whatever it is. So I just turn on one controller. I'm doing my thing. I got my headphones. The sound. The sound effects are so good. And one Hamza, they're in a good situation with this game because think about it. They've got this 360 degree situation that is going on. And they can innovate. They could add a lot of updates to this game. There's a lot of different things they could do. They could have certain squares that are running full motion video of somebody. And you hit that square, you get 500 points. You know, there's different things they could do. They could do tic-tac-toe. They could do like other kinds of games and stuff. So there's lots of different... I haven't even tried the multiplayer. I'm assuming it has multiplayer because I think the regular PC VR version. I just went into the arcade mode and I've just been doing it in arcade mode. And this game, see the thing is, man, I had Racket Fury and Racket Fury is good. Racket Fury is absolutely a very good game on the Oculus Quest. Rowdy Guy was talking about it on F Reality a number of times, right? And so we ended up getting Racket Fury and it's actually a very good game. But now that I've got Racket and X, I don't know that I'm going to fire that up anymore because this is going to this is going to take all of that Racket juice. And guess what? It's another Tron like. Yep, Racket and X is a Tron like. The Quest got its first Tron like. I call them Tron likes because they're games that evoke Tron in some kind of way. Like you like they're somehow tangentially related to Tron, just like the style, the sound effects, the neon, the kind of futuristic style, whatever. I call it a Tron like. So that is Racket and X. Very solid. 20 bucks though, not exactly cheap. There's going to be, you know what I'll say negative about this game? There's going to be some people that get this game and they're like, what's the big deal? This is just a basic game where you hit a ball against a wall, you get a couple of points, eh, I was bored after about 45 minutes. I, I know you're going to have people that are going to say that. There's going to be some people that just don't get into Racket and X, and that's perfectly fine. For me, I used to play tennis back in the day, so I'm trying to like turn on the ball. Yeah, because they're like Tron. They're a Tron-like. <laughs> they're a Tron-like. Yeah, Nathie says, sounds good. We can meet up after the show. Dude, isn't it like late as F in the Netherlands or whatever? Like, isn't it like, like, wouldn't it be like 2 a.m. right now? Or are you not there? But yeah, definitely. Uh, we can do that, Nathie. Um, but yeah, so Racket in X solid kind of expensive at 20 bucks but it is cross by so if you do have like a rift where you can play it on both you know you can share it with your family and stuff that's kind of a good thing so i'm a fan of it i like it uh i think when you the headphones are going to be key because some people might have some crappy headphones and they might not get the same juice out of Racket and X that I got out of it because the sound design is really where I think it makes its hay, basically. The sound design is what it's all about. Okay, so I wanted to talk really quick about the Vertigo 2 demo that is out there right now on Steam because the first day that I talked about the Vertigo 2 demo, and I didn't talk about this yesterday with Sebastian, I should have got a hold of him ahead of time and I should have said, Sebastian, jump into Vertigo 2 for about 
25 minutes. You know, check it out for about 25 minutes before you come on the show so we can talk about Vertigo 2 for a quick second. But he had never, he hadn't played the demo yet. So I didn't talk about it yesterday. And the day when I did talk about it, I had only played 20 minutes of this. And so I didn't play the whole demo of Vertigo 2. And what I had played of it, if you go back and listen to what I said, I was impressed. I was impressed with a lot of parts of it. I also said there were parts of it that weren't very AAA. And like you could kind of see the indie aspect of it, but there's very good parts of it as well. And I also talked about like some weirdness that was going on, like performance and stuff. I didn't see like this part here. Like this part of the level, the later parts of the level, where you start seeing these other enemies, like these guys, those robot guys, those enemies were pretty good. Where the earlier enemies, I mean, the early enemies in this Vertigo 2 demo, it's just bam, bam, bam to the head. You kill them in a couple of seconds. It's not a big deal. Like there's not a lot of like artificial intelligence and stuff that is going on with the enemies that's in Vertigo 2. But what there is, is it's an adventure. It's a place. You're there. You feel like you're in a place. You feel like you're having an experience. And you know what? We miss a classic adventure kind of a game in VR. That's what the original Vertigo was. Vertigo was an adventure game in VR. And Vertigo 2, another adventure game in VR. And pretty impressive. Some of the graphics, some of the sounds, and some of the special effects and stuff that were going on in different parts of the demo, especially very late in the demo, and just like the overall graphics and stuff, very impressive. Very impressive in a lot of ways. I had a lot of bad performance issues, though. I, straight up, I had bad performance. But what I need to do is I need to like go in there and drop down, uh, drop down the graphical settings one notch or whatever. Just lower it down one notch because I heard somebody mentioning it that if they dialed it back one notch in terms of like the graphics. Uh, everything ran perfectly smooth and they had no problem whatsoever because I was getting a lot of stutter. So it was hard for me to enjoy it. Um, but I only went in it that one time. I got to go back in there. I've been playing Racket and X a lot. I wanted to play Racket and X a lot. So I felt like I had a good take on Racket and X and a good feel for Racket and X. But I want to go back into this Vertigo, do, Vertigo 2 demo and play it some more. Um, and yeah, Reckoner VR. Gary says, I want to try the original Vertigo again. Yeah, dude, the original Vertigo was pretty good. And the thing that I always liked about the original Vertigo, there was something about like the hallways and the rooms and everything that you were in and, and the lighting and stuff of the original Vertigo that it really gave me good immersion. Like I felt like I was really there. Like I like and I would walk around. I would walk around physically as much as I could when I was playing that original Vertigo demo. That little creature, like the little ball thing, the little robot guy, the little Higgs unit, I don't know what they call it. You know, in Robinson the Journey, it's the Higgs unit. In uh what's that game on PlayStation VR? There's a game on PlayStation VR that's kind of like Robinson the Journey and they, there's a little floating ball in that game as well. And then you've got the floating balls in Vertigo one of them that's talking to you and so kind of a lot of similar things going on in a lot of similar vr games but a cool adventure absolutely worth checking that demo out that is a huge demo it gives you a lot of uh stuff to play around with so everybody should definitely check that out okay so let me see here um final assault final assault is in the news ladies and gentle bots so let's go ahead and bounce over to the webinar and here it is final assault on steam it's a free weekend guys so everybody can try this game out and check this out i played this very very recently in the valve index and it looks damn good this game looks good in the valve index it is a bright vivid game and it looks beautiful in the valve index i was very impressed with how good this puppy looked in the Valve Index. It is free for the weekend. You can play this. You can check it out. And this is the kind of game where you don't need to spend five, six, seven hours to get a feel for this game. You can get a feel for Final Assault in about 45 minutes. So you might as well 
go ahead and download this baby and check it out. I would say, like when I think of this genre, when I think of the real-time strategy genre in VR, there are three games that immediately come to mind. Brass Tactics, Final Assault, and Tabletop Gods. Those are the three games that immediately come to mind. And for me, of all the three, I would probably choose Brass Tactics, but I'm a baby. And I'm a baby when it comes to RTS games. I'm an RTS baby. Like, I'm not good at these games. In fact, I really suck at these games. Like, I would absolutely get smoked if I played another real character because it's just hard for me to manage a million different things that are... Like, that's not my wheelhouse. Like, keeping track of 28 things that are happening simultaneously. Not my thing at all. I will absolutely get smoked in this if I try to play a real human. So I just play, like, the computer and stuff like that. But Brass Tactics, like a lot of people have said, Brass Tactics is kind of RTS for babies. So it's like ideal for me. So Brass Tactics is my bag. But a lot of people would probably prefer Final Assault. And they would say that Final Assault is the real business when it comes to real-time strategy in VR. And Tabletop Gods is also very good. I give some love to Tabletop Gods. Um, damn, 13 gig download. That's Jarillo. Is Final Assault 13 gigs really? Wow. Um, yeah, it's a it's a free uh, free weekend. And then they're also having a deal, so you can grab it for 20 bucks. Now, 20 bucks. You know, when you think about 20 bucks, is that like a huge giant discount? You know, I mean, the normal price is what 25 bucks or something like that. And so it's going for it's going for 20 bucks basically. Yeah, 35% off. The free weekend runs the eight. No, no, no. That's the discount. Free re, free weekend. Free weekend is July 18th through the 21st. And definitely worth trying. And I think I think it's on sale over on Oculus. Like if I go over to the Oculus store, yeah, the daily deal is final assault. It's uh, 20 bucks. I don't know if you can play a free weekend. No, they're having... Oh, check it out. It's the Battle of the RTS Free Weekends. Dude, it's the Battle of the RTS Free Weekends. You got Brass Tactics on, on Oculus. And then you've got Final Assault over on Steam. Both of them having free weekends. So, you know what? If you haven't tried either one of these babies... Maybe try both of them, and then you make the final call. And that could be the question of the day. What's better, Brass Tactics or Final Assault? Gary, actually, I'm curious. Gary, okay, he says Brass Tactics is better in my opinion, but Final Assault is a lot of fun and looks great. Yeah, yeah, Brass Tactics, I, I agree, I agree. I, I also think Brass Tactics is a little bit easier, which is great for me because I suck. Um, so yeah, Brass Tactics is free this weekend and Final Assault is the daily deal. Also, there are a lot of sales that are going on. There are a ton of sales. The Humble Store, we gotta, we gotta bounce over here and talk about this before I forget about it. Okay, check this out. Maybe one of the best VR gaming deals. Look at this, ladies and gentle bots. Fallout 4 VR, 15 bucks. Fallout 4 VR for 15 bucks. Now check this out. I already own. I already own Fallout 4 VR, but it's not in my private account. I'm damn near thinking of buying this for my private account. I'm assuming I get a Steam code, right? I think I get a Steam code for this. So if I get a Steam code for this, I could put it in my primary Steam account because it's like, dude, 15 bucks Fallout 4 VR? Fallout 4 VR is like the, one of the best VR games there is. Even though it's not designed for VR, it's not native for VR, it's freaking good enough, man. Like, I put, like, Fallout 4 VR is in my top five. It is absolutely in my top five best VR games. But I'm a Fallout guy. Like, I've always loved Fallout. So, and then having it in VR, even if it's not freaking perfect, I'll take it. Okay, Skyrim is going for 20 bucks. Skyrim is 20 bucks. Space Junkies is 7 bucks. Arizona Sunshine, 20 bucks. Raw Data is 16. Now, here's the thing there's a complicated deal that you can do where you got to buy a certain game that is like a tier something game, and then you get like a couple other of these games 
and it and it works out to be a really good deal but it's complicated you got to figure the whole thing out so i'm not going to go down that road but i'll just take a look at some of these prices abduction for twelve dollars hey doom vfr doom vfr for 10 bucks that's a pretty solid deal right doom vfr and you know call of the star seed for eight bucks heart of the ember stone it's it's the same sales right it's the same sales every time. Look, to the top. To the top is 10 bucks. It's the same sales, right? All the same games go on sale. And for all the same sale prices, it happens over and over and over again. And you know what? I feel bad. I always feel bad for a developer that has like a brand new game that is coming out right now because they got a brand new game. They're trying to sell it for 20 bucks, but I could take the 20 bucks and I could get Heart of the Ember Stone and to the top and it might cost a couple of bucks extra, but goodness gracious, dude, Heart of the Ember Stone, you want to talk about 3D sound? I was talking about the 3D sound of Racket NX on the Oculus Quest, which is incredible. Please use headphones for the love of God. Absolutely do it. But the 3D sound on, on Heart of the Ember Stone, very good. It is very good, the 3D sound on Heart of the Ember Stone. One of the best. In fact, I'd like to know what's better. What, what VR game has better 3D sound? Then Heart of the Ember Stone or say Firewall Zero Hour on PlayStation VR because both of those games should win freaking Emmys. We were talking about Emmys yesterday. Emmys for sound, Heart of the Ember Stone should win an Emmy. Firewall Zero Hour should win an Emmy. And maybe the guy that did Racket and X on the Quest, he might deserve an Emmy as well. But yeah, we got some pretty good deals over here. For example, like A Fisherman's Tale for a 10 spot. That isn't too bad. Uh, let's see. Lethal VR, this game. Dude, three bucks though. Do you know that there are people that made Lethal VR? These are the guys that made freaking Burnout and shit, right? Didn't they make Burnout? Weren't these the guys that made the old Burnout games? And they became like Three Fields Entertainment or whatever it's called? Tell me I'm wrong about this. Yeah, Three Fields Entertainment. These are like the former... Criterion. These are like the former Criterion dudes, right? Some of the best programmers of all friggin' time. And they made this game called Lethal. A lot of people don't know much about it, but it's only three bucks. It can't be that bad, right? It is only three bucks. Um, I've actually heard some pretty decent things about it, so that is a $3 game. A Skyworld Kingdom Brawl, not too shabby. That's only 5 bucks. Townsman VR, I've heard some mixed things about that. It's only 5 bucks. Uh, 11 Table Tennis, it used to always be 10 bucks. Now it's 20 bucks, and so it's like, hey, we're 50% off. Now we're 10 bucks, but we always used to be 10 bucks way back in the days. But then everybody started calling us the best ping pong VR game, bar none, and we could start commanding $20, which is exactly what happened. Okay, Psychonauts Rhombus in the Ruin. You might think, you might think that $3 is like a freaking. A no-brainer, right? I bought Psychonauts for $3 on, I think, the Oculus Store. And I just didn't get into it. But there's people that love it. There's people that love it. I did not... I was not feeling it. It did not work for me. Killing Floor Incursion for 10 bucks. People need to recognize. Killing Floor Incursion is a damn good game. And honestly, if you go into your Encyclopedia Britannica and you look up Visceral, Visceral, you should see Killing Floor Incursion. That is a visceral game, man. The zombie things that are in that game, they are pissed. They are, they are some motivated-ass zombies that are pissed as hell. They're stomping mad. They are stomping mad. Creed for 18, not too bad for like a prime time kind of a game. Um, so yeah, a lot of great deals. And I know that there's other deals. That just happens to be the humble bundle thing. Okay, so Telefrag is out right now. Now let's go ahead and take a quick look at the Telefrag trailer that was out not too long ago. Um, and then we'll bounce over to the Steam page. And I got to tell you, man, 
Uh, the reviews are mixed on this one, so you might want to calm the F down. But let's take a look at this trailer just to kind of see the graphics and stuff. Looks pretty dope, right? I mean, I like the look of this. So you look at the trailer for Telefrag and it looks pretty freaking beautiful. Like I like the backgrounds. I like the idea. I like the art design here. This idea of like Roman Greek architecture, but in the future. And it's kind of like a quake arena battle type deal. Very similar, similar in ways to Space Junkies. A lot of interesting backdrops. Like, look at these interiors. You got, like, warp gates and stuff. Now, one of the weird things about this game, though, is, like, the ceiling is the floor. The floor is the ceiling. And I got to admit, guys, I don't like stuff like that. Give me a goddamn floor. I need a floor, and I need to know where the floor... I don't want the floor to be the ceiling. This isn't descent, okay? I'm not in a little spaceship where up is down, down is up, and I don't know where left and right is, and I'm going anywhere. I like there to be a ground and a ceiling, and I don't want to be standing on the ceiling. I'm telling you, if I played this game, I would get capped in a New York minute. I would be dead in a second. I'm just not very good at these games. That's why I don't get very excited about these games. But still, what we could do is let's go ahead and take a look at let's take a look at the uh, Steam page for this Telefrag. I just wanted to see like what the price is and all these kinds of things. So let me get back over here. Yeah, so here we are. This is the Steam page for Telefrag VR. And it arrived today. I forgot about this game, man. I straight up forgot about this game. It arrived today. Anshar Studios. These are the guys that made... Did they make Detached? What was the other game that they had? Yeah, Detached. Okay, so these are the developers of Detached. So they do have a little bit of chops. Now, the price on this puppy is a little on the high side. We're talking 25 bucks. It does have a 10% discount for this launch uh, this launch time frame here. 22, 22 and a half bucks. A little bit of expensiveness going on here. But it, I mean, it, it does look like it has some really nice production value. But God, man, this is such a hard nut to crack. This multiplayer shooter type of a game... There's just so many of them, man. They're all competing against each other. Don't you feel bad for all of these? Like you got freaking, you got Onward, you got Pavlov, you got Space Junkies, you got Contractors, you got Wardus, you got Standout. I mean, there's a million more where that came from. There's like Virtual Battlegrounds, Virtual Fighters, Cyber Fighters. There's a million of them. And there's a couple more coming out next week. And then this one just came out today. There's just not enough space in this arena for these kind of games. Arena, quite literally. And I don't know if it even has like a bots mode. I was looking, I was actually looking at this earlier and I was thinking to myself... I'm like, you know what, I want to see these graphics, but I don't want to get my ass pulverized in a New York second. So, do you guys have bots and stuff where I could run around here and just see all the pretty graphics without worrying about being killed in 10 seconds? Not even 10 seconds, I'd be killed in about 4 seconds. As soon as I stepped out into the open, I would basically be a dead duck. So it looks like you got 4 primary uh, backdrops that you're working with. You got 5 primary weapons that you're working with right about now. Graphically, it looks great, but let's go to the reviews because I thought the reviews... Let's see. if Can I click on reviews? Okay. Um, some of these reviews were interesting. Like, okay, you got these recommended reviews where they're pretty, pretty hyped on it. And then you go down a little bit and they change a little bit. Like this one says... The not smooth movement is awful. Offer a smooth option and you'll get a thumbs up. This guy says, I've tried the beta. The game has potential and I like it a lot. It's a one verse one combat game. One verse one? There's only one other dude running around? Are you sure? 
There's got to be more. Just one other dude? It's a one verse one combat game with a mix of Quake and Unreal Tournament. It's fun to play. The graphics are great and it's very competitive. It forces the player to search and look at the sky to know which platform the enemy can be on. See, that would bother me as well. Looking for, where's this guy standing? On the roof or on the bottom? Uh, this guy says, not sure what I played against. Looked more like a glitch. The rotation of the player after the tel teleport is horrible. Uh, teleport bubble too big. Weapons were only available as pre-made sets. After dying, the game forced me to take a different set. Screenshots look good. <laughs> so look at, he lists like five negatives and then he has one positive. Screenshots look good. This guy says there is potential. Looking forward to the final version with more content. Yeah, these, these kind of reviews are interesting. It's like, it's like, yeah, there's plenty of potential here, man. Um, interesting concept, not bad, and free. Free for you, maybe. Uh, this guy said, waited to be matched for five minutes and nothing happens. In response to the developer who wanted more details, I clicked on the button when I was ready to be matched and waited for more than one minute. Nothing happened, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, so reviews are a little bit on the mix side, I would say. And then the price... You know, the price is 22 something bucks. I don't know. I mean, it, it basically depends. Are you in love with Space Junkies? Did you want something kind of similar to Space Junkies? Now, here's my question. Is this really a one-on-one -on -one game? That seems crazy to me. Wait, let me see here. Does it say? Um, Fast-paced shooter, blah, blah, blah. There's got to be more than one person running around. One versus one death match. Really? This is one verse, so it's only one other dude running. It's just you and one dude. You and one dude. Really? That is trippy. Let's go back over here. I mean, I'm trying to see. I'm looking at this trailer. Do I see more than one enemy? I guess it's just one guy. So it's like the nemesis mode. It's just you and one dude. You and one dude face off. He could be on the ceiling. He could be on the ground. He could be in the side portal. Over to the left, he could be anywhere. Um, graphics look pretty good, though. Graphics look pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. This is gonna have a hard time. One verse one. That's gonna that's gonna have a hard time competing with like at least Space Junkies is like two on two, three on three, right? I think that's a little bit more exciting personally. One verse one. I mean, I don't know. I guess some people might really get into that. That is kind of interesting. Wouldn't have thought about that. All right, well, let's see here. Oh, we've got a brand new Iron Man trailer came out. Now, this is one of those dev trailers, so it's kind of long and drawn out. However, Iron Man, let's remember, guys, when it comes to PlayStation VR, when we think about upcoming PlayStation VR games, the biggest upcoming PlayStation VR game, No Man's Sky. Okay, which should be coming very, very soon, we would think, right? So No Man's Sky is floating out there. We're waiting for it, waiting very patiently. The second biggest game for PlayStation VR gamers in terms of an upcoming game that people are hyped on is probably Iron Man. And so I've got this like extended dev blog trailer where they're talking about Iron Man, Ryan Payton. You know, he used to work with Kojima under Kojima. Now he's got his own studio called Camouflage. They're banging away on Iron Man VR for Sony. These are the guys that made Republic. And so let's go ahead and check out this extended trailer. Um, yeah, Nathy says, I would be surprised if this game is still around in a year. Aiming for one verse one is the... Oh, well, I guess one verse one from uh, in terms of finding other players, you're more likely to find another match. You just got to find one dude. I mean, you just got to find one dude. So you are likely to find... I guess that is the, the bright side of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this Iron Man thing out. It does look pretty cool. Um, so let's see here. Where is Iron Man? Here we go. When the team had this opportunity to work on Marvel's Iron Man VR, we knew from the very beginning that we had to nail the sensation of flying in VR. It had to be comfortable, it had to feel fast, it had to feel like you are Tony Stark in the suit. We knew going in that there are certain iconic things that fans of Iron Man are going to be looking for. 
Number one, flight. Number two, the immersive Iron Man HUD. And number three, various iconic weapons. The first thing that people think about when you're envisioning the Iron Man fantasy is, is all about flying. To me, the sense of flying as Iron Man is about freedom, speed, and power. Right off the bat, we knew you have to be able to go wherever you want. We knew we wanted this open sandbox experience punctuated by that freedom you have, that full 360 degree movement. We wanted you to be able to fly really fast but be able to maintain control as you bank through corners and through canyons. But it's different from a flight simulator or like a cockpit experience because it's like directly controlling where you go with your body, which only takes like a few seconds to really get the hang of. Of course, you have the first like, whoa moment the first time you lift off the ground. It allows for your body and mind to make that one-to-one -one connection rather than controlling the turn through a stick or a button press. Where power comes through in the flight is with the acceleration and the special mechanics such as boost you can go from zero to 200 miles an hour. <laughs> you can come to a stop, you can hover, you can run around a corner, you can dive down to the floor, you can blast back up to the ceiling. We just want to make sure that the player is in full control and that they can take that time to evaluate the battlefield properly. When people put on that helmet and the HUD boots up, they feel like Iron Man. I want them to feel like they're in control of the most power that they've ever felt in their lives. You're not gonna be a master right off the bat, but over multiple play sessions, I want you to feel like you are starting to command that power. The HUD, the weapons, the flight, it's all done so that the player can feel like Iron Man and be a superhero. We'd always go back to the source material and make sure that we were leveraging what that ultimate fantasy is of being Iron Man and pairing that with the strengths of the immersion that VR offers. Iron Man and VR, they just work perfectly together. Putting on that helmet, grabbing those controllers, the HUD booting up and the thrusters in your hands, and put them down at your sides and you start blasting forward. All right, well, that was a very long trailer. It was about two and a half minutes, but kind of a nice breakdown. Now, the thing is, it's funny when this trailer starts out, like no gameplay whatsoever. You got to wait a while to finally get some actual brief seconds of gameplay footage. Like that's not gameplay, not actual gameplay, no gameplay. Okay, so we're waiting, we're waiting. Let's see when we get to actual gameplay. We're still waiting. Uh, we continue to wait for it. Iron Man VR learning to fly. So yeah, they're going to talk to the developer for a while. Here's some more not actual gameplay. Uh, we're talking to one of the designers. Not actual gameplay. Not actual gameplay either. Uh, now right there, there's a couple of seconds of gameplay. Yay. Okay. Then we talk to uh, one of the designers. Not actual gameplay. But no, they. I mean, I'm being a little facetious here because, okay, now that looks good. Like, that is legit gameplay, and that looks good. And when they talk right here about, like, seeing how the HUD kind of moves around like that, like, that looks very good. Being able to hover, being able to dive down, go different ways, and kind of, like, quickly accelerate and move around really quick. And you're using the move controllers, and the moves are working as the thrusters on your palms. And so you're basically putting your palms where you want to go to try to get that Iron Man style. You know, I think this looks really good. My number one worry with this game is like, look at the clouds, okay? So how often are we going to be up in the clouds with airplanes? Like, I hope, like, almost everything I'm seeing, there's clouds, clouds. Are we ever going to be in a city as Iron Man? Is it always going to be, like, out on a beach somewhere or way up in the clouds with an airplane? Um, are we ever going to be in more of a, like, metropolis kind of an area being Iron Man? So, like, see that. Okay, so clouds, yeah. Oh, they can do clouds very good. And I imagine they are going to do clouds very good. But after a while, I think clouds would get a little bit boring. Um, Uber Wolfie says, I missed Iron Man. Is it for Quest? No, this is a PlayStation VR exclusive. This is coming from developer Camouflage, as you see on that guy's shirt right there. These are the developers of Republic. Ryan Payton, who is the uh, founder of Camouflage, this guy right here, he worked under Kojima for a number of years and then eventually started this company camouflage they made republic now they are working in conjunction with sony making this iron man 
Iron Man game for PlayStation VR. And it looks pretty freaking solid. This is probably... It's got to be one of the most wanted PlayStation VR games of this entire year, without question. Move controllers are required. Like, this game requires move controllers. And remember, the big thing about this game originally was how are you going to do this game when you've got a single camera? What happened? Like, you know, if you're trying to be Iron Man and you're trying to go anywhere and do anything, you start turning around, what happens? The camera can't watch you anymore. But they've created some amazing wizardry, some kind of like magical stuff that they're doing with the accelerometers and predictive and all this stuff. And they're analyzing your hip movements. I don't know what they're doing, but basically somehow, some way you can turn around. You can occlude. Oh, my cat just scratched the crap out of me. She's hungry. Um, you can turn around. You can occlude your controllers and it's not a problem, you know? It's gonna keep track of your controllers. At least that's what people are saying, which sounds really incredible and quite exceptional. My cat is straight up scratching me. It's like way past her meal time and she's pissed. Um, I need to get out of here before she causes major problems. Alrighty, folks, uh, let's see here. Ah, oh, man, I didn't get to the Neuralink story. I'm gonna have to save Elon Musk and his Neuralink. I'm going to have to save that for Saturday's episode. I am currently being attacked by a cat. Like, I am not even playing. She is straight up psycho on me. She is hella pissed. So I am going to go ahead and get out of Dodge. Let me go ahead and get my little outro thing. And we will say goodbye to the peeps. But yeah, that's going to go ahead and do it, man. And so I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to mention once again, it is a free weekend, guys for real-time strategy in VR. It is the weekend of real-time strategy. We're talking about Final Assault is having a free weekend on Steam and Brass Tactics is having a free weekend on Oculus. So it's a beautiful thing. Some incredible real-time strategy games, two of the three best, in my opinion, real-time strategy games in all of VR are free this weekend. Take advantage of it. Enjoy it. It's out there for you. The other thing is the Vertigo 2 demo is a fat demo, man. Fire up that fat demo. Yeah, dude, my cat is on straight tweak status. She is tripping out. She is hella hungry. Um, so anyways, I'm going to go ahead and bounce the heck out of here, but I will be back tomorrow on Saturday right around noon or basically whenever Nathy is done with F Reality. I'm, I'm assuming they're having a show tomorrow. And I'll probably try to start really close to after F Reality is over. And we'll talk a little bit about some brain-computer interface and anything else I might have for you guys in. All right, everybody have a good one. Take it easy. Later.